I recently got the opportunity to test out the new Samsung Galaxy Z Fold 3. So to test it out for filmmaking, I thought let's make use of this very large screen and edit an entire video on it. And if you watched the video from two weeks ago, you will have noticed that we put at the bottom of the description that that video was edited in Premiere Rush. So today I'm gonna tell you how I edited that entire video on the new Galaxy Z Fold 3 using Adobe Premiere Rush. So that video was shot on the Sony a7S III, which is the same camera that I'm using right now. And the audio was recorded with the Zoom H5, which is what I'm using to record the Rode NTG3 right now. Now the first problem that I ran into was that the footage that I recorded on the a7S III was in 10-bit 422. And the problem is that Premiere Rush Mobile does not support those file systems. So before I could edit on the phone, I had to first put it on my computer and then export it to a 4208-bit video. Now the problem with that is that you're just removing all the benefits of shooting at 10-bit 422. So before I did that, I took it into Premiere Pro desktop and I actually color graded it first. And then I thought while I'm color grading in Premiere Pro, might as well just sync the audio as well so that it's only one file to work with. I then just put it on a USB stick and I actually used the same USB-C adapter that I use for my MacBook Pro, plugged it straight into the phone and it was really easy using the default My Files app on the Galaxy Fold to just copy the footage that I wanted onto a folder on the internal storage and then I could import it into Premiere Rush Mobile. Now this step in Premiere Rush is actually pretty simple. When you start up a new project, it just asks you what files do you wanna add, it goes through your whole gallery, or you can choose a specific folder, which is pretty cool. So I used the specific folder, I found the footage, and I started the project. And then once you import it, you can see that it just places all of your footage onto the timeline, right, one after the other. But of course, this was like a 30 minute talking head recording. So the first step when I'm editing this, even on the desktop, is to chop up the talking head and make sure that I'm only working with the part that I need. Now on desktop, I've got my shortcuts. I've got my keyboard, I've got my mouse, and I can just quickly do what I need. And that whole process probably takes me around 45 minutes because I can do it pretty quickly in real time. On Premiere Rush Mobile though, I did not have the luxury of physical keyboard shortcuts. So not having the keyboard shortcuts meant that I had to find another way to trim out little pieces from my talking head video. So what I had to do is I scrub on the timeline to the spot that I wanna make the cut. I press the cut button, which is a touchscreen button, and then I go to the end, cut that piece, and then I know everything in the middle is being removed, and then I had to manually press the delete button. So this was super tedious, especially towards the end. If I just make a, a micro mistake, I have to make a cut, go back, delete. Go, 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 oh no, I did another take of it make a cut, go back, delete. So I really wish there was just a trim to previous cut point button. I would really like that for my workflow, but I couldn't find it. So that actually meant that editing this whole talking ahead, just trimming out the bad parts and keeping the good parts took me around three and a half hours. So that's five times longer than it would usually take me on a desktop with a keyboard. But nevertheless, I never really had any issues with playback and I could easily scrub through and cut what I needed to cut. Oh, stop, stop, quick, 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 just quickly, just quickly, just, just hold on. Just sorry, I know I'm interrupting myself, but just, if you can just quickly smash the like button, I'd really appreciate it. Okay, okay, sorry, sorry, go, get back to it, go, go, go. Now it's important to stress that you can use that exact same USB-C adapter that I was talking about and connect HDMI to a monitor and connect a USB keyboard, a USB mouse, and it'll work just fine. It'll actually function a lot like a desktop. However, I didn't really wanna do that. I wanted to just see what it would be like to use the phone on its own. So I had to rely on the touch capabilities. Now, the cool thing is that I did have access to the new S Pen, the S Pen Fold Edition. And this was really helpful. I could just use the pen to 
very precisely pinpoints what I wanted to do, trim forward, trim backwards. And the timeline in Premiere Rush Mobile is actually pretty similar to the magnetic timeline in Final Cut Pro 10. So it was really interesting to see that kind of implementation because one of the reasons that I love Premiere Pro, the desktop app, is that it's not magnetic, that you can put anything anywhere that you like. However, with the touchscreen, it actually makes a lot of sense to use the magnetic timeline since trimming in and out points are so much easier when you don't have to first you know, select the whole timeline and move it over and then trim outwards and then select the dead spot and then so I think using the magnetic timeline on mobile makes a lot of sense. However, if you've seen one of my comparison videos, you know that I like to add a little transition when it goes to the next section. And when I'm cutting up the talking head, I like to just leave a gap on the timeline so that I know, okay, this is a new section, this is a new section. Now that was not as easy to do in Premiere Rush. And the way that I had to do it is make a cut and then insert a placeholder. Now I couldn't find a default placeholder in Premiere Rush. I probably just missed it somewhere, but I, I actually just downloaded a 1920 by 1080 black solid image from Google Images. And then I just placed it in that gap. And then I could see where that placeholder is supposed to stay. However, that sort of didn't work for me very well because I couldn't visually see where that placeholder is because it was just a black solid and Premiere Rush gives you a preview of the first frame or every couple of frames, depending on how far zoomed in you are, of the next clip. So in a whole video, when you zoomed out, you can't really see where the placeholders are. So I did the same thing with a red solid uh, image. I just downloaded it from Google Images and put it on top of the black solid. And then I knew, okay, this is where the placeholder goes. I could zoom out and I could see, okay, section, section, section. So after I edited the talking head, it was time to add the B-roll to the shot. And I had to, again, put it through the computer, first color correct it, and then put it back onto the Z Fold 3. And this was a pretty easy process, kind of similar to cutting up the parts. And the magnetic timeline means that when you place your footage, it stays there. So if you go back and decide that you want to extend a clip from earlier, it just moves everything along and you don't have to worry about things going out of sync. Oh, hey, hey, sorry, sorry. I'm just interrupting again. Sorry, sorry. Um, would you mind just quickly hitting the subscribe button? I would appreciate it. That would be cool. We've got a lot of videos, a lot of content. It's it's cool. Just check it out. Please, 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 please. Okay, okay, back to the video. Sorry, sorry, sorry. Another issue that I had was that the text tool didn't actually let me add text. So I clicked on the text tool and then it's supposed to load some presets or something and it just refused to load the presets. So I didn't actually have a chance to use text on this specific timeline. Another cool thing that I was trying out is to use screenshots and then crop them and move them. Now I couldn't find any way to keyframe anything. So everything is just static. I would have liked to add a, a slow pan up or a scale down or something like that, but I couldn't. I could just set everything to what I needed and then that would be it. However, the settings that they are, if you're just using static things like a picture overlay or a, you know, a crop or a scale or all those kinds of things actually worked really well. And finally, when I was done editing, I kind of planned to just port this whole project to desktop to you know, finish up, add some more presets because one of the things that Adobe is really proud of is that you can sync your project to the cloud and then you can just open it on your desktop and continue. However, I couldn't do this. It just would not sync to the cloud. When I turned off Wi-Fi, it would complain that it can't sync. But when I turned back the Wi-Fi back on, it would just be hanging and nothing would happen. I left this overnight and nothing happened. So eventually I had no choice but to export the video from Adobe Premiere Rush mobile and then put it onto the desktop so that I could add my audio options and then obviously add all of my transitions that are not supported in Premiere Rush. And also things like smashing a like button. Those little animations that we use are not supported by Premiere Rush. So I had to do that in Premiere Pro. So that was the reason that I wanted to finish the video in Premiere Pro instead of Premiere Rush. And this is sort of the biggest problem that I have with Adobe Premiere Rush. When I exported that video and I put it onto Premiere Pro as an exported video, I couldn't choose the bit rate or the bit depth 
all I could do is use match video settings or make it 30 frames per second, which is not something that I would do being from South Africa, which is a PAL country. So we use 25 frames per second. So I was happy that it could at least match the video settings, but I think it only exported at around 10 megabits per second. So the video that I had to finally add all of my elements to and then export to YouTube was only a 10 megabit export from Premiere Rush. And on top of that, if you zoom in real close to that video, you can see that there is a sort of a mosaic kind of effect. Now, I don't know, that's probably just the codec settings that was used, but it's really unpleasant and I find it really distracting. So I hope it didn't distract everybody else who watched that video. But that brings me to my conclusion. I do not recommend editing in Premiere Rush if you're gonna export from Premiere Rush. Maybe you're using a different phone or you can get your cloud syncing working, in which case you can then convert your project to a Premiere Pro project and then use all of Premiere Pro's power to export for social media or whatever you need. But if you're hoping to just use the Z Fold 3 to upload all of your videos using Premiere Rush, I probably wouldn't recommend it. The Z Fold 3 itself is amazing. The processing power, the RAM, everything kept up so well. Even when I was doing my screen recordings, playback still kept up. I did not get any stuttering or dropped frames. So the phone itself is really good. And actually the screen is amazing. I've never been a fan of editing on mobile because the screen is so small. However, with the Galaxy Z Fold 3 combined with the S Pen Fold Edition, it's really a great solution if you need to edit something on the go and then finish it on your computer. So unfortunately, it is not my phone, so I can't do a lot more tests. However, I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, please consider smashing the like button. I really would appreciate that. And, you know, while you're down there, might as well hit subscribe. We've got a ton of videos on editing, writing, and, you know, just general filmmaking stuff. So if you browse the channel, I'm sure you'll find something that you like. But that's it from me, Yaku van Bosch. And until next time, go out there, stay safe, and make your movies.